Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. You might have read it in the news or heard it elsewhere. The gold price in US dollars has exceeded $2,000 per ounce. And that is a new all-time high. Um, in euros, it already earlier hit the all-time high actually. But uh, maybe the price in dollar is more important after all. So... Um, it seems like this trend is even continuing. Um, the same goes for silver. Silver and gold, it seems like the overall trend knows only one direction and that is upwards. I told you that the German government is already thinking about new insidious ways in order to tax people who invest in paper gold. But my feeling tells me, my gut feeling that is, that physical gold is following. Um, maybe they will try to ban the possession of precious metals like um, they did in the United States during the Great Depression. I think uh, physical gold, I mean, you could only have from the 1970s onwards again. This is when these measures, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I didn't look this up, but I, my knowledge is in the Great Depression, it was made illegal to for private citizens to own physical gold unless it's like um, jewelry or an heirloom but you couldn't have coins or bars or something and uh, maybe that's next so today i want to present to you some news from the first uh, six months of 2020 um, when it comes to gold new numbers were released i found that very interesting especially as it pertains to germany and also um, yeah, I want to give you my outlook, my opinion in the end, what that means. So I was actually surprised to find out, well, not really so shocked, but um, that overall, of course, the demand for gold and silver um, decreased in the world a bit. I mean, the production also decreased, as I reported on earlier. I mean, the, the, the mines and the distribution of gold was of course um, disrupted as we all know but I was surprised to learn that Germany alone German citizens bought 83 tons of physical gold in the form of bars and coins in the first six months of 2020 and that when in the entire world only a um, little bit short of 400 tons of physical gold were purchased. So that means Germany alone bought 20%, over 20%, over one fifth of the physical gold in the first two quarters of 2020. That is quite surprising. But um, I know from personal experience that since the um, burst of the dot com bubble in the late 90s, uh, around the year 2000, and then also in the euro crisis in gold and precious metals in general became more and more popular in germany because the trust in the stock markets the trust in bonds and other investments is really taking a hit and i think in these times of uncertainty and crisis germans they want to have something solid and we see this trend once again so there they say also there was a little bit of an east west divide while in asia and um, in the Middle East and uh, so in the East generally the demand for gold went down. In the West it went up a little bit but Germany really um, yeah, sticks out here. I mean nobody, um, no country, no people um, ramped up their uh, demand for gold that as much as the Germans. So normally Indian people are known to um, privately own a lot of gold and um, from personal experience I know that a lot of this has to do with jewelry and um, with um, when you get married you know the family of the uh, of the groom has to give something to the family of the bride and um, yeah that that is um, going into the family wealth, into the finances, a little security for uh, the future, for bad times maybe. But um, the hoarding of gold, so to speak, is really cultural in India. And um, I read that Indian households own, or uh, what was it again, 25,000 tons of physical gold. That is absolutely crazy. And um, I read in the article that I linked down below also that the 
government. So Prime Minister Modi, he has some kind of a gold um, yeah, monetization scheme or something like that, where he tries to give incentives to Indian households, to private Indian citizens to kind of give their gold away or loan it out um, I'm a little bit fuzzy on the details, but um, and I don't want to explain India's economy to you, but um, they see it as a problem, or let's say they see it as an unused asset, you know, that this uh, gold that all these families hold in India, that this is dead capital, and, of, and, and they want to use that in order to boost the economy, so that this wealth goes into circulation, and I don't know if that is such a good idea. I mean, for the Indian economy, it might do wonders. But from the perspective of the private holder of gold at the moment, with the price developments that we see, maybe it is smarter to hold on to your gold if you are an Indian um, woman or, an, or, or a family. I don't know if this gold then belongs to the woman or if it's seen as family wealth, um, I don't know, yeah? <laughs> but uh, maybe it's more the woman's gold, I don't know. And um, so there is this scheme from the Indian government to monetize or to, to put this gold into cir circulation. So I think personally they should hold on to it, even though I see uh, if people hoard too much gold, it is a lot of debt capital and it doesn't do the economy any good. So of course if you want to imagine that in the first half year of 2020 of course the industrial demand and also the demand for jewelry of course went down um, many of the jewelry stores were closed as i already mentioned a couple of times the um, just the raw material you know is, is also not being produced in high quantities the jewelry stores are closed down anyway the entire economy came in many places to a halt or was significantly um, reduced in size. So it is quite interesting, I think, that in these days gold is mostly purchased for different reasons than before. Yeah? You had more industrial use, you had more jewelry, and now you have these angsty Germans investing in um, bars and coins like there is no tomorrow. Um, I find that quite interesting. Um, when I read the article that Germany stuck out so much, I, yeah, as I said, I mean, I wasn't shocked, but it, it I mean, 20% of the world demand of physical gold, that is quite a bit. Um, and as I said, I really wonder what our government will do next. I, yeah, <laughs> maybe it doesn't take too long before they, um, enact some new law or some some new um, directive um, to the detriment let's put it that vaguely of the to, to the disadvantage of owners of physical gold maybe they want to make it harder to sell it or that you have to register with the government if you want to sell it or maybe the nuclear option um, like the US did uh, banning it outright banning the possession or limiting it to a teeny tiny ridiculous amount maybe and then you have to um, distribute it throughout all your family like your nieces and nephews your aunts and uncles they all get a little bit you know uh, of course then you must trust them that they give it back to you if you need it but i don't know maybe people come up with with little stratagems like this then or they just bury it in the woods and wait for you know better days when it's legal to to own it and to, to, to monetize it again. Who knows? Or they just hold on to it out of spite. That might also be the case. Okay, so what does this mean now? So I think it's very, very certain what that means. Uh, we have read, for example, earlier this week, or was it last week, that the Fed is letting the US dollar really um, drop now. Um, normally, they tried to at least keep the dollar somewhat strong, but it seems like um, the Federal Reserve um, of the United States, they have changed their stance towards that. I mean, I'm not an insider, I'm not an economist, but this is what the article said. This is, this is when I look at the, at the uh, exchange ratios and all these prices. Um, 
you know, the demand for gold goes down, but the price goes up. I mean, that just means that the unit in which we measure the price, that being the dollar or the euro, that they're actually <laughs> losing in value. Yeah? This is what I always say. I mean, is gold getting more valuable or is the dollar just getting less valuable? I mean, in the end, it's the same thing unless you measure it then again in other things like a new car or a new house or a computer or I don't know, some tools or, or, or a suit or some other thing, some other um, measure of wealth in some way. But everything is relative, of course. But what we can clearly see is the gold price, the silver price, they go up right now. A lot of people are now jumping on that train, this gold rush that is going around the world in some parts at least. And um, the question is always, is it um, still okay? Is it too late already? But commentators say, you know, if such a trust crisis, and this is what this is, people are buying gold because they distrust the government, they distrust the market, they do not trust in um, financial institutions, they do not trust in banks anymore, um, they think it's all rigged and they're fearful. Yeah, let's not kid ourselves, this is done out of fear. And um, if such a phenomenon, such as we had uh, like in 2007, 8, 9 and onwards, if that is happening again, then these gold prices that we see right now are only the beginning. Yeah? If it happens again, like back then, that people fundamentally distrust in the, in the currencies, they fundamentally distrust the, the value of the dollar, of the euro and so on, then... This is only the beginning. I mean, I'm not going to name a number now, but, you know, just look at the chart back then, what it did, and um, try to upscale this a little bit with a stretching factor that takes account of the uh, inflation that has uh, taken place in the meantime, and you will see that um, you will arrive at staggering numbers, actually. And uh, this really might just be the onset of a, yeah, phenomenon just like um, 12 years ago we don't know but um, it looks like a trust crisis a try a crisis of trust into um, the world leading currency into the dollar and also the euro for example into the policies of the federal banks of the central banks I'm sorry and the the markets in general is underway and that would mean Precious metals is the way to go right now. Some stocks, of course, are also always a good option. And, you know, if, the, if you want to preserve the value of your, of your wealth, so to speak, then stocks are also a good option. I mean, stocks also produce dividends. But in times of uncertainty, people in Germany at least, and as I said, Germans are not the wisest inve of investors, um, they choose gold over stocks, I think. I mean, many Germans nowadays, especially young ones, they also invest in stocks, but um, there is no comparison when you to the Anglosphere, for example, or to Japan. Um, Germans distrust um, the stock market um, comparatively a lot. And one has to say, though, I mean, if you look at these financial crises, if you bought gold early enough, you yeah, then you you that was actually a good investment in retrospect then yeah but um, gold doesn't produce dividends okay it, it it is in that sense it is dead capital you have it and maybe the price goes up maybe the price goes down but it's it's not producing any dividends for you yeah but uh, as I said if that happens again what we have seen 12 years ago in the euro crisis the Lehman brothers and all that stuff then gold is not a bad investment all right so that's it from my side on this topic and um, be safe wherever you may be servus kameraden